Hello again everybody. I mentioned in the first video that I'd made a start on some parts of the uh, the next guitar I was going to make when I heard about the great guitar build-off. Um, in fact all I'd really done was um, choose the top wood and glued the two halves of that top together and played around with some rosette materials for um, uh, to make rosette blanks for future guitars and I might use one of those on on this guitar. We'll see. I'll show them to you later. I've got a couple of options for back and sides um, and also for um, bindings and purflings and uh, fretboard bridge and stuff. Um, so I'll go through all those and try and make a decision and we'll get some idea of what this guitar will look like. The piece of wood I chose for the top is this um, I think rather unusual looking piece of sinker, western red cedar sinker because it's obviously been laying at the bottom of a lake or a bog or something for a period of time before it was sawn up and uh, dried out and stuff. Uh, it's got this rather unusual pinkish stripe down the middle which is quite striking. Um, it's got terrific straight grain which I'll show you close up in a moment but importantly it's got a wonderful um, tap tone um, great sustain, goes on for ages, and I think it's going to make a lovely top. So here's the bit of wood on my bench. Um, I'll pick it up and show it to you a bit more closely. You can see it's got lovely straight grain and some great colour to it as well. I'm going to try and tap it and just hope that this comes out. Now I can hear a, a note sustaining for a good three seconds, I would say probably longer. I don't know if that's come out on the microphone, but uh, I'm I'm really excited. I think this will make a lovely guitar top, both in terms of the sound and, and look. I've got a couple of um, back and sides sets here. Um, the one on the left is uh, Indian Rosewood, um, which has, the back has cupped a little bit or twisted since I got it out of my wood stash but uh, that'll clamp out, won't be a problem. And the one on the right is um, mahogany. I've wiped it down with white spirit to show the, the colour that it will be under a finish a little better. Um, and that's the mahogany in terms of sound. I think either would uh, work very well indeed. Um, so much depends on how it's built and so on. It's not simply the wood type. The, the top is far and away the most important um, sound producer in an acoustic guitar anyway. So um, here's my top. Again I've wiped with white spirit to see the what the final colour will be a little better. I mean it's not totally accurate of course but um, Looking at it, I'm tending towards the mahogany. That seems tone visually, tonally, to suit the top wood better. So um, I'm going to go with the mahogany. For the rosette, um, I've been playing around with some uh, different materials. Um, at the top here, there's some spalted beech. Uh, which I've book matched, um, so a rosette would be would look something like that. Um, this has got this amazing figure here, which uh, is going to make a fantastic sort of goat's head soup headstock some, for some guitar. I'm not sure about this one. I think probably not. Um, I've uh, here's another wooden rosette, which I do quite often. This is actually made from some pieces of lilac cut from a, 
a friend's garden. Um, if I use this, it would have um, more bands of red there and probably, and on the inside as well, um, and a black one outside that to give it a bit more definition. I'll put this up on the, the top in a minute to see how, how that looks with the, the top wood I've chosen. The other thing I've been doing recently is um, playing around with some copper, distressing it in different ways. This, um, this is just messing around with a blowtorch, um, sort of dancing the flame over it and, and watching the colours appear and then taking it away just at the right moment. It's, uh, it's a bit haphazard but uh, it gives quite a cool effect. I think, um, well, it's sort of a slightly <laughs> psychedelic, trippy sort of look. I'm not sure it's suitable for, for this guitar. It might actually suit a, a ukulele better, um, although this ring, of course, is way too big for a, a ukulele rosette. But um, I think I'll, I'll pass on that, certainly for this guitar. Um, the other way of distressing copper I've been trying out is um, fuming it in ammonia with um, various things put on it. Uh, things you have lying around the house, you know, like um, ketchup and mustard, vinegar, um, all kinds of things. Soy sauce is another one. Um, I did some tests on some very thin copper foil. Um, this wouldn't be usable as a as a rosette because it's um, the foil is so so thin it, it sort of buckles and even when it's backed on a piece of thin plywood it's not flat enough to use but having tried the technique a few times um, I bought some thicker pieces of copper this is nearly a millimeter thick um, so it doesn't sort of bend and distort so easily um, oh, these by the way are other I quite like this look actually, um, but again, I don't think I could use it because uh, it's not it's not f quite flat enough. Although maybe I could, maybe. Um, but anyway, this one I'm quite pleased with. I've cut some various rosettes out of the same piece. This is a guitar-sized one. The other two would be for ukuleles, but this has got this nice sort of blue flex in and my gut feeling is that I'm going to go with this for this guitar um, so obviously the headstock would be cut out of this piece and the rosette um, I would need to well I wouldn't need to but I would bind put some purfling around the rosette again to give it a, a little more definition I'm going to be careful not to break this piece I need to it's my only piece of black and white and I need it needs to be bent properly but um, there would be a black and white inside and out to sort of define the um, the ring um, so I'll bring up the top wood and put a couple of these on so we get an idea of what it might look like finally so here I've put the um, the lilac rosette in place with I've tried to dummy the um, sort of red and black you'll have to imagine another red and black in the on the inside um, and it it looks quite nice that's that's a possibility I quite like that although the the edges do get a bit lost um, next to the the dark part of the cedar but um, Anyway, I'll, let's have a look at the copper one, which was, that's a much better contrast. I think uh, that is, yeah, that's going to stand out a lot more, I think, especially with the, the white. Again, that would be on the inside as well. Um, yeah, I think I think this is the one to go for. These little blue flecks look great. I think against the uh, the pink and the the brown of the 
the cedar wood. So yep, that's her decision. Good. So having decided on the mahogany for the back, um, the next choice I'm going to make is for the bindings. Um, I've brought two up which seem most suitable. Um, this is a bloodwood binding with a black-white strip on the bottom. Um, I have made these but this was actually bought in. Um, and the second choice is an ebony binding with a simple white-black on the bottom. And I think, looking at it, the bloodwood, I think it's going to be too similar to the mahogany. I think a bit a bit more contrast is um, is nice. So, yeah, I think uh, ebony binding that's going to look good. In terms of purfling, I've got um, I've got three different widths here. Um, I think the very thickest is not going to work. That should be for a larger guitar. This will go between the wood of the back and the binding on the outside and the, the white in it just serves to accentuate the, the outline obviously, the shape of the guitar. But uh, that, I think this is going to be too much. It's too wide. So one of these thinner two. This one is very thin. It's nice but I think it's it's a little bit too thin. So my Goldilocks pur purfling is, yes that looks right, that looks good. I've got four fingerboard possibilities here. Um, this is some Macassar ebony on the left, then um, a rosewood next to it, then some um, some other ebony, probably, um, well I don't know, just standard ebony, <laughs> and a beautiful wild olive fretboard which is uh, a lovely piece. I'm not sure it's suitable for this guitar though. Um, I think the this looks too similar in color. I think a bit more contrast is nice. Um, the olive wood, of course, contrasts enormously with anything. But um, I think I'm going to go with a standard black ebony fingerboard. Well, this has got some nice figure on it. But no, I think I'm, I'm going to go neutral with this and just have a black fingerboard and I've got a bridge blank downstairs I know which um, will match that. I don't think I've got one that matches this, that's going to be a problem for the future but um, they don't have to match of course but um, anyway so that's the fingerboard decided and um, the neck well that's nobody really sees that except the player. Um, I've got a piece of Spanish cedar here, which is very standard neck wood, very stable, very light. Um, it'll make a great neck. Finally, just uh, quickly, I found the bridge blank that I was thinking of, um, which is a very good match for the fretboard I've chosen. Nice uniform black colour, so that will go very well. And the tuners I'm going to use are these Goto 510 Minis, which I've used several times before, they're great. Um, and the Cosmo Black finish goes with just about anything, so I'm happy with that choice. And that's about it for the main materials. I'd better start building. <laughs>